for many of us in 2020, we have spent more time staring at the ceiling than staring out to sea. More time gazing out the window to watch empty streets than through the clear waters of a rock pool. As a marine biologist, being near the sea, visiting the coast has always been an integral part of my life and something before a pandemic I never thought I would be cut off from. Spending time in nature near our oceans, finding the calm of going rock pooling is something that's really important for my well-being and mental health and I'm sure for many of you that is the same. But being in lockdown and away from the sea, does that mean we have to cut off our connection to the ocean? Or can we find other ways to fuel our love for the sea until we can return? You mean start to learn how to snorkel in the shower, right? No? What? Ugh. Don't worry, my other suggestions are going to be far more useful in helping you connect with the oceans. Because psychologists at the University of Exeter have been studying how our wellness can be influenced by the benefits of interacting with nature, either virtually or digitally. What's even better is that they've shown that things like blue space, so anything that connects you to water, like the ocean, and anything that is really biodiverse, so that's having a lot of species and a lot of different types of species in the same area, all contribute to having a bigger boost in the benefits that you see from it. This is also linked to that we enjoy fleeting things more, like we'll enjoy a sunset because it won't last forever. And I'm going to argue that that also counts as rock pooling because you can't go rock pooling all the time only when it's low tide. Wow, that must mean that my sunrise rock pooling videos must be really good for your noggin, so I would go check them out and make sure to subscribe we're over there to help support my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing five ways for you to stay connected to the ocean during lockdown. Nora Ephraim, the screenwriter of a very famous bookshop rom-com, described reading as reading is an escape and reading is the opposite of escape. It's a way to connect with reality after a day of making things up and it's a way to make contact with someone else's imagination after a day that is all too real. I love this quote because when I read my mind jumps to a new place ready to explore and suddenly that new place that I am exploring can feel far more real than the reality of me sitting alone in a room. More than that, in a pandemic where it's really difficult to meet new people, where we're craving not only the connection to nature, but the connection to other humans, reading non-fiction books written from the perspective of another person that loves nature just as much as you, is amazing. Not only do you get to learn all these facts, but you feel a connection that you're getting to know a new person. They can make you laugh out loud. Like when Heather Buttervance described rock pooling as not for the self-conscious, because if you love barnacles, you'll end up in deranged positions with your bum in the air muttering to yourself. Or cheer as you hear Helen Scales manage to drop a Star Wars reference, referring to the Millennium Falcon Lego set to describe what mollusk evolution is not like, obviously. And no one quite sums up what thoughts can spiral through our minds, but the peace that nature can bring as the perfect antidote, quite like the ever honest and inspiring Emma Mitchell. This year from a single bookshelf, I have explored the world's oceans, from the deep sea to the Antarctic to rocky shores. I have learned so much by simply just being brought along by the incredible stories and truths that the authors tell about the amazing marine world. And isn't it exciting? There are so many books to learn from, so that when we return to the ocean again, we will know so much more about it and fall that little bit more in love with it because of that.
For most of 2020, if you were a fly on the wall, you would have seen me in this position, or this position, or this position. Oh, and, and that position. Gaming has arguably never been more popular or more important than in the last year. On my adventures, I have explored ancient Greece, tropical rainforests, desert islands, and my most favorite place, Hyrule. But mixed in these games are beautiful marine elements, exploring aquariums, swimming in the sea, sailing, snorkeling, wondering what the giant octopus in Mario is, and loving that kelp is finally getting some attention in video games. If you haven't picked up a games console since you were a kid, and you're looking for something to do, a way to escape, then I highly recommend trying to get back into gaming. I've rediscovered my love of it this year, and I've spent many an hour exploring the amazing worlds that people create. I often find myself sitting on a cliff, watching a video game sunset. But in a world where being outside and exploring like this is difficult, then why not let the video game world be your reality for a few hours every week? Something that often comes hand in hand with loving exploring nature and the ocean is a love of photography. And I am one that is obsessed with photography. I have thousands and thousands of pictures of the sea and marine creatures. I love filming and taking photographs and I miss not being able to snap a moment in time in a new and exciting experience. But just like in Mary Poppins, an absolutely fantastic way to jump into a place you've been or even a new place is through art. There's something about putting paint or pen on the page and taking a memory stored in your mind, forcing it to run down your arm, out your hand and onto the paintbrush or pen immediately transports you to the place that you are drawing. You don't have to be like one of the classic painters and try and draw that photograph exactly as it is. That's what photographs are for. Just take kids drawings for example, a few lines and a lot of colour and that child has created a whole new world with their imagination. If you asked they could tell you about that drawing for absolutely ages. So why not take a page out of their sketchbook and just sit down and enjoy trying to paint somewhere. It's immediately transformative and a great way to connect with places that you have been. For anyone that isn't into photography or wants to explore places that they've never been before, then one way that you can explore the world is using Google Earth. With this, you can visit Antarctica, the coral reefs of Australia, South Africa, anywhere you want. This is actually tip number four on itself as through the screen you can instantly travel around the world. But I also find that taking the time to sit and paint a new electronic place that we have explored just makes it a bit more special. And if you want the full experience, why not dress for the occasion? And finally, let's talk about our last point, and that is watching nature online. My YouTube channel has over 175 videos, each of which features at least footage of one marine creature. Of particular interest would be my rock pooling vlogs, where I've explored rock pools around the country and recorded what I have found. I also have a playlist where I have really high quality recorded footage of over 75 species that you can find in rock pools around the UK, all put to rather relaxing music. So I highly recommend checking them out too. My channel is there to show ocean positivity and to bring you guys along as we connect to the ocean. So I hope that during this lockdown, it can be of some help. And if it is, then I would also appreciate some help by you clicking the subscribe button to help support my channel.
But of course, it's not just my YouTube channel that has some fantastic marine footage out there. And so I wanted to share what else you can find. On the BBC, programmes like Winter Watch and Spring Watch are doing this thing they're called Mindfulness Moments, where they share 90 seconds of nature footage from different locations. They're all on their website and it's a great place to go check out and just zone out for those 90 seconds. It's really important that we're making time to take those moments to connect with nature and to kind of recharge and reset, especially during such a difficult time. Other organisations have also stepped up a ton during lockdown with loads of great activities and webcams and live streams. These include Lizzie Daly's Earth Live Lessons, which show some awesome scientists talking about what they do. Aquariums around the world are also doing live webcams, including the famous Monterey Bay Aquarium, where you can see them feeding the species and just view their awesome animals to relax and chill out to. One particular live webcam type thing that I always love to watch regardless of whether it's lockdown or not is the EV Nautilus's um, underwater deep sea rover webcam. This is a ship that goes out and is specifically there to study deep sea creatures. And when they send their little ROV camera down and go and explore the deep sea, they live stream it too. On their website you can check out all the past live streams and it's fantastic because they actually film creatures for the first time and discover new species whilst they're live on the webcam. It's a fantastic way to explore somewhere that you're not even going to explore probably in the normal world. So definitely worth going to check out. But it's not only big organisations that are doing some fantastic stuff to share their slice of the sea, it's also just everyday people, whether it's marine biologists or people that just love the ocean. Social media is connecting people around the world, sharing their love of the sea. Right here, I'm gonna pop up a list of handles on Twitter and Instagram of some people doing some amazing ocean optimism and ocean sharing for you to go and check out if you want your fix of the sea every day. If you're looking for some ocean cheer, I also did an ocean optimism live stream with three other amazing ocean themed YouTube channels where we just talked about the incredible oceans and, you know, why we should support the seas and why they're just generally amazing. So you can check that out on my channel and there should be more of these coming up in the future. So that should be really exciting. One of the fantastic things of this lockdown is that we have a chance to share our love of the ocean, even if we are not there ourselves. Though lockdown is difficult and one of the difficult parts is being physically cut off from the sea for many people, it is a chance to learn more, to share more, to connect more, not only with the ocean virtually, but with other people with similar interests around the world. Whether that's on social media or here in the comments on my channel as a place to meet new people, comment below, you know, where you are, what you like doing and start to connect. And if you take one thing away from this video, is you should always put your wellies on, even if you're in your pyjamas, because through words, web or watercolour, the ocean is still right at your fingertips. We will be back at the sea soon enough. And when we're there, we'll have learnt more, we'll have connected with more people, found new places to go, and we'll be even more grateful and excited for it. Until then, stay safe, subscribe to support my channel, and I will see you next week for another video, if not sooner in the comments. <laughs> have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye.